Georgia with Rare Earth Adventures and today we're going to talk about the Sam Splint. Today we're going to be talking about what a Sam Splint is, when to use it, and how to use it. This is a Sam Splint. Uh, there is a thin piece of metal alloy and it sits between two closed cell foam strips. It can be bent into any shape and it's used when you are splinting a suspected fractured uh, bone or joint. So the most important thing to remember with uh, a SAM splint when you're splinting somebody's broken bones is that if it is a bone, a long bone, that is between two joints, you want to make sure you're immobilizing the joint that is above the injury and below the injury. So for example, if Alex's forearm is broken here, we're going to make sure that we secure these two joints so that this bone is secure. If it is a joint injury, like a fractured wrist for example, you want to make sure you're immobilizing the bone above of the injury and the bones below the injury. If Alex's forearm is broken, we want to make sure that we're immobilizing the elbow and the wrist. There's a couple ways you can set this up with a SAM splint. I will show you both. The first way is to form your Sam splint like this, so there's a little pocket for his elbow to sit. That way we're immobilizing the elbow, and the Sam splint goes all the way up to the hand that we also want to immobilize. And then we're going to form the Sam splint to his hand and to his arm. This is going to be a pretty delicate process if someone's bone is broken because it will hurt them. So you want to do what you can with still keeping them comfortable. When the SAM splint is formed around their arm as best as you can get it, you want to take something like an ace bandage or some gauze or some coban or even a shirt will work if you don't have any other medical supplies and you're going to wrap around the SAM splint. Once you've wrapped and secured the SAM splint, you can go back and check their CMS or their circulation motor and sensation. You can do that by going back in and feeling for a pulse, asking them to wiggle their fingers, and asking if they can feel your fingers. So that's an example of how you would set up a SAM splint. This is an alternative way to use a SAM splint for a forearm injury. As you can see, we have doubled up the SAM splint underneath and gone up the elbow. So this still immobilizes the joint below and above the injury. You would go ahead and wrap this with whatever bandaging you have and that would secure the SAM splint. Here's some more examples of how to use the SAM splint. For an ankle injury or a injury to the lower leg, you can use the SAM splint and wrap around the foot. This secures the bones in the foot and above the ankle and that way you're immobilizing the ankle. For the lower leg, it's a little bit trickier to immobilize the full knee because the patient will no longer be able to move their knee. This is typically done with two SAM splints, but if you only have one available, you can wrap it the same way and extend it as far up to the knee as you can move the SAM splint. Here's an example of how you would splint a knee injury. Using two SAM splints, you would use one SAM splint on the outside of the leg, one SAM splint on the inside, and wrap it. As you can see, again, we've immobilized the bone below and above the injury. The additional use of the SAM splint is to secure someone's neck in case of a neck injury. If you have training and you're able to recognize that and secure their neck, the SAM splint is a great tool. So before placing the SAM splint on someone's neck, you want to set it up by pinching a bend in part of the SAM splint and then uh, six inches further down, you want to pinch another bend. This is where their chin will sit, so you can push and indent the SAM splint in. This way you're not having to manipulate the SAM splint while uh, it's on the patient's neck. You'll hold the SAM splint right where the chin cup is, place it on to their neck, wrap it around their neck, and where the SAM splint is bent, you will bend the additional part of the splint to secure it to their neck important to remind the patient that this isn't a completely secure thing, it just is to remind them not to move their head or neck. Thanks for watching. I'm Georgia with Rare Earth Adventures and you just learned how to use a SAM splint.